In this video, I am going to walk you through a detailed numerical example on how you can calculate equivalent annual cost, also abbreviated as EAC, to evaluate investments that have unequal lives. So consider Clubbers Golf Incorporated. This is a company that is considering the purchase of a new machine for the production of golf clubs. Okay, so this company is looking to invest in a machine that will produce golf clubs. Now machine A costs $3.21 million and it will last for six years. You're told that the variable costs of maintaining this machine is going to be 37% of sales and fixed costs are going to be $350,000 per year. So basically this is a machine that once you buy and there's upfront investment, you're looking to maintain it uh, over its useful life. And some of those costs are going to be variable. They're going to vary with sales and other costs are fixed. Machine B is the same. It's going to cost you upfront 5.455. So this is uh, basically your capital expenditure. And then it's going to last you longer, nine years. The variable costs are going to be lower, 32% of sales and fixed costs are also going to be lower than machine A. Uh, $240,000. Now you're also told that the sales of each machine will be $12.4 million per year. You're told the required rate of return is 9% and the tax rate is 24%. Here's the important part. Both machines will be depreciated on a straight line basis. So that's fine. But then the company plans to replace the machine when it wears out on a perpetual basis. This part is extremely important. When it says that the company plans to replace the machine when it wears out, this means that if machine A will run its useful life of six years, you will need to buy another machine A to continue the operations and same for machine B. This is extremely important because whenever you are looking to replace machines in this fashion, you cannot compare the two directly based on what their net present value is because these are investments of unequal lives. Six years is not the same as nine. And so you need to calculate how much each machine will cost you on an annual basis. Hence, you need to calculate equivalent annual cost. So what I'm doing here is that I've created a separate section called inputs in which I've laid out all the pieces of information that we are given in this problem. So for machine A and machine B, you know, what is the upfront cost? This is essentially our capital expenditure. Right, so this is basically our capital expenditure, our capex. This is how much we're looking to spend up front. Uh, we're given the useful life, the variable costs, which are 37 and 32 percent of sales respectively. The sales number is given, discount rate, tax rate, all of that information is given. Remember that whenever we are evaluating long term investments or investments in like machines, which are going to generate cash flow over a long period of time, the main equation that we're always using is financial cash flow, which is equal to earnings before interest and taxes into one minus the tax rate plus depreciation minus capex minus changes in net working capital. This is always the main equation that we use. And I've explained the use and significance of this uh, equation in a previous video. That's exactly what I'm going to do over here. I'm going to use this equation to calculate the financial cash flows associated with machine A. I'm going to do the same for machine B. So for machine A, the useful life is six years. So that's why I have laid out the timeline going from zero to six. The first thing is, and, in, and mind you, in order to get EBIT, EBIT is basically sales minus costs minus depreciation. So S is for sales, C is for cash costs or costs. Depreciation is also a cost, but it's a non-cash cost. So we have that separately. So this is EBIT. This is EBIT. And so this is what I'm doing here first. I'm calculating, looking at sales, costs, depreciation, so on and so forth. One important point here, and as you can see over here as well, for sales, I have zero. Why? Because whether you get machine A, whether you get machine B, the sales that you're going to generate from both is $12.4 million. So we don't really care about sales that we're going to generate from both these machines per se. Okay, what really matters are the specific machine specific uh, costs. So we know what those are. Machine A has different costs. It has $350,000 fixed cost and then variable costs I'm calculating. So if you look at this cell, variable costs are calculated as 37% of the sales that we're expecting in each year. The depreciation expense is calculated taking a look at the machinery cost divided by its useful life of six years. So that is also going to be a constant across the board. 
So now if you calculate EBIT, EBIT is basically sales, which in this case we're saying is zero, minus all the costs minus depreciation. So earnings before interest in taxes is coming out to negative 5.4 million approximately for machine A. So what this EBIT of negative 5.473 million is suggesting is that when you will buy machine A, as a result of that, your earnings before interest in taxes is going to go down by 5.4733, which means that your tax liability is going to go down a little bit, okay? And as a result, so you'll get a tax break in some sense. So earnings before interest in taxes into one minus the tax rate. This is basically taking EBIT, subtracting the taxes. And now you add back depreciation. You add back depreciation, so depreciation expenses right here. So this is what we refer to as our operating cash flow. So all of this stuff right here, all of this, this is basically operating cash flow. We're not done because in order to calculate financial cash flows, we also have to account for the capital expenditures and any changes in net working capital. The capital expenditure here is given to us in year zero, we're gonna be spending $3.21 million on machine A. And then finally, you have change in networking capital. Fortunately, in this problem, there is no initial investment in networking capital or any additional investment in networking capital involved. And so now if you want to calculate the free cash flow or financial cash flow, it's simply operating cash flow, which we've calculated using EBIT into one minus tax rate plus depreciation. You subtract the CapEx right here. You subtract any changes in networking capital. So for machine A, what we're saying is that you're going to spend about $3.21 million up front. And then over the useful life of six years, you're looking to spend in terms of cash flows, you know, it's going to drain another $3.624 million approximately over the next six years. If you calculate the net present value of these cash flows, what this is really saying is that, and you can do that. NPV basically takes as input the discount rate, which is 9%. And so if you just discount all these cash flows, negative 19.469 is basically saying that buying machine A is like spending uh, about $19.469 million today. This is after accounting for all the costs that are going to be associated with maintaining it and all that. You can do the exact same thing for machine B. So because the analysis is similar, I'm not going to walk you through each and every number here. The only difference here is that you're going from year zero till year nine because uh, machine B has a useful life of nine years. Every other calculation is the same. Sales, fixed costs are specific to machine B, variable cost, depreciation. So that's straight line. And so everything else, like the CapEx is a little bit different. So now you have the free cash flows obtained in the exact same manner. The main point here is that when you will calculate the net present value of machine B, you will account obviously for all the nine years worth of cash flows. And what this is suggesting, investing in machine B is like spending $23.756 million today. Now, and this is the important part. If you were looking to make an investment in either machine A or machine B, and if you used NPV as your guide, you'd say, hey, I'd rather spend $19.46 million or $19.47 million on a machine compared to 23, right? Because So this is less negative. This is less negative than this. However, what you are ignoring is the fact that machine A has a useful life of only six years, which means that after that, you're going to be buying another machine A to replace it. So you need to calculate equivalent annual cost. An equivalent annual cost and is basically uh, calculated as uh, the annuity whose present value equals the net present value. So here, uh, in order to do that, I'm using the payment function in Excel. This is the same thing as figuring out, okay, what is the annuity? What is the annuity amount that you're essentially spending over the next six years by buying machine A such that the present value of that is exactly equal to 19.469. So that can be done in Excel using the payment function. For rate, you input the discount rate, which is given in our, in our, in our uh, problem. Uh, the number of time periods is six because that's the useful life of machine A. 
And finally, for present value, you're basically equating to 19.469. And so when you get $4.34 million here, this is saying that buying machine A is like you spending $4.34 million on an annualized basis or on an annual basis. Compare that calculation to machine B. For machine B, because it has a useful life of nine years, when you'll calculate equivalent annual cost, you'll still, still have the same rate, but for the number of time periods, you will have nine. And so investing in machine B is like spending $3.96 million on an annualized basis. And so now, if someone were to ask you which machine is better, now your answer changes because $3.96 million is less than $4.34 million. You're better off investing in machine B because while the upfront NPV is higher, it lasts you longer so that in, on an annualized basis, it costs you less. Please understand that equivalent annual cost calculation only applies when you're looking to replace the machines. Okay, whenever one of the machine is going to live out its useful life, you're going to have to replace it. If the question had instead said that the company plans not to replace either machine, right? So once you've used a machine, you're done, then you don't need to calculate equivalent annual cost. Then it's purely a function. Then you're purely making your decision on NPV. You're like, okay, I have to buy one machine, only one time expense, which is cheaper. And guess what? In that case, the NPV of machine A is higher. You're spending less there compared to machine B. So in that case, machine A would have been the better choice. But if you're looking to replace the machines after they've lived out their useful life, then you have to calculate equivalent annual cost because that method allows you to correct for the fact that both machines have unequal lives.